We've been in the book of Joshua, and we've made it to Joshua chapter 4. And in Joshua chapter 4, the children of Israel have crossed the Jordan on dry ground. And now the Lord is commanding Joshua to have 12 men carry stones out of the midst of Jordan and carry them to their lodging place. And this will be a memorial for generations to come. And Joshua is also going to place 12 stones in the midst of Jordan for a sign as well. And the stones can picture death just like the cross. Uh, they were to take it to the lodging place, just like you want to bring the cross of Christ home with you to your lodging place, you see. The stones were to be a memorial for their children, just as we need to tell our kids about the death and the burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Also consider how we have ordinances today that remind us of the death and the burial and the resurrection. You know, we got the we got water baptism we do after we're saved as uh, as a memorial of what happened. We got the Lord's Supper that reminds us of the Lord's death till he comes. You know, the stones that they have in this chapter, it's a memorial. It's so they won't forget. You need to remember some things. Write it down. Do something that's going to remind you of what the Lord's done for you. Joshua going into the Jordan with the stones pictures the death and the burial, even. You know, Joshua, as I've told you, he pictures the Lord Jesus Christ and him taking those stones and going into the Jordan, which Jordan itself is a picture of death, that this whole story pictures the death and the burial of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he come out of it, it pictures the resurrection in Joshua 4, 9. So there's a picture of the death, burial, and resurrection by Joshua, who's got the same name as Jesus. This whole event with the Jordan magnified Joshua in the sight of the people, just as the death, burial, and resurrection should magnify Jesus Christ in your eyes. Carrying those stones can picture carrying your cross. Have you examined your Christian life lately? Are you doing any suffering? Are you carrying your cross? Jesus said in Luke 9, 23, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. While carrying the cross is no easy task, it's going to lead to great things. When you pass over into the victorious Christian life, continuing to bear your cross, here are some things that go along with that. Here are some results of following in the Lord's steps. That's what we're going to talk about. The first thing is you're going to pass over clean. If you get saved and you begin to carry your cross, even though it's hard, even though you're going to do a lot of suffering, the result is going to be passing over clean. Passing over to your final destination clean. Because when you're suffering and carrying your cross, you're not giving in to temptation. You're not living like the sinful world. You're doing what the Lord would have you do. But let's look at Joshua 4, 1 through 10. In Joshua chapter 4, verse 1, it says, And it came to pass when all the people were clean passed over Jordan, clean passed over, that the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Take you twelve men out of the people, out of every tribe of man, and command you them, saying, Take you hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the prince, where the priest's feet stood firm, twelve stones, and you shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place where you shall lodge this night. Then Joshua called the twelve men whom he had prepared of the children of Israel out of every tribe of man. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of Jordan, and take ye up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder, according unto the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you, that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? Then ye shall answer them that the waters of Jordan 
were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord when it passed over Jordan. The waters of Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. And the children of Israel did so as Joshua commanded, and took up twelve stones out of the midst of Jordan, as the Lord spake unto Joshua, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, and carried them over with them unto the place where they lodged, and laid them down there. And Joshua set up twelve stones in the midst of Jordan, and the place where the feet of the priests which bear the ark of the covenant stood, and they are there unto this day. For the priests which bear the ark stood in the midst of Jordan, until everything was finished that the Lord commanded Joshua to speak unto the people, according to all that Moses commanded Joshua, and the people hasted and passed over. But notice there in verse 1 it says, it says this in verse 1, And it came to pass when all the people were clean passed over Jordan. Meaning, basically just meaning they all made it to the other side. You see, I came to the cross a guilty sinner, and I passed over clean. And I want to stay clean until I reach my destination. You know, how do you stay clean? How do you pass over clean? Well, you have to hearken to Joshua. You have to listen to what Joshua said. Israel had to listen to what Joshua said. But Jesus Christ is our Joshua. And Paul commands to consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, 1 Timothy 6, 3. Jesus Christ became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Jesus Christ showed you how to listen to authority. He laid out the pattern of how to be a servant, how to carry your cross. Now will you follow his steps, like 1 Peter 2.21 tells you to do. You know, a lot of people think, well, Jesus Christ is only speaking in the red letters. They think when they open their Bible that Jesus Christ is, the only time he's talking is in those red letters. No, the whole thing is the Lord Jesus Christ talking. You know, Paul is our apostle for today. Where did Paul get his revelation? He said he got it from the Lord Jesus Christ. And, you know, the way that you're going to pass over clean is to follow Paul because all of, follow, uh, all of Paul's writings is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is speaking through the writers of the Scriptures. So it's all the Lord Jesus Christ. And you open up the book and you hearken to the words in this book. And you're going to pass over clean. Aren't you tired of just being dirty all the time? Don't you get so sick of your sin? Like Job said, I abhor myself. He abhorred himself. Don't you get so sick of the flesh that you just hate yourself? Don't you want to pass over clean? You know, in 1 John 1, 9, the most comforting verse for me, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just forgives our sins and it cleanses us from all unrighteousness. The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. There's no sin that you can do that you can't get cleansed of. And you ain't get cleansed by confessing to a priest. You don't get cleansed by sprinkling holy water on yourself. You can get cleansed right now. You come to the Lord Jesus Christ, confess your sin, and you're cleansed. And that's just with your walk. When it comes to your salvation, the moment you believed, you were cleansed of that sin, past, present, and future. And then what you want to do is confess your sin, forsake it, then start living for God. Carry your cross. When you're suffering for the Lord Jesus Christ and hearkening to Joshua, you're going to pass over clean. You're going to finish your course. You're going to hold your weight. That's what you got to do is hold your weight. And verse 3, it says, And command ye them, saying, Take you hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, twelve stones, 
and you shall carry them over with you and leave them in the lodging place where you shall lodge this night. Then Joshua called the twelve men whom he had prepared of the children of Israel out of every tribe of man. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of Jordan, and take ye up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder, according unto the number of the tribes of the children of Israel. This can picture carrying your cross. He chooses out a man from each tribe and has them carry a stone. They're holding their weight. You got to hold your weight. You can't expect to pass over clean if you never hold your weight. If you're just, you got saved and did nothing afterwards, you're not going to pass over clean. You know, you got to get to work to pass over clean. So Joshua orders 12 men of each of each of the tribes to take 12 stones and carry them out of the Jordan, and the stones would be heavy. And they'd have to have a lot of faith to go get back in the water to get the stones, right? You know, who wants to get back in the Jordan after you made it across it? And you think about the Lord Jesus Christ, he carried the cross just like Joshua carries the stones in Joshua 4, 9. It says, And Joshua set up twelve stones in the midst of Jordan and the place where the feet of the priests which bear the ark of the covenant stood, and they are there unto this day. Jesus, just like Jesus Christ carried the cross, Joshua carried the stones. They're not asking you to do anything they wouldn't do. Notice that. You know, Jesus Christ isn't just telling you to carry your cross without carrying his. He carried his cross, and he laid you out a perfect pattern to follow. Joshua, he didn't just tell them to carry some stones. He carried some stones. The Lord left an example to follow his steps, 1 Peter 2.21. And when you hold your weight and you take up your cross... You're going to pass over clean through the rest of your victorious Christian life. And this has to do with your state. This has to do with your discipleship. This has to do with your daily walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. This is not your standing. Your standing or position in the Lord is he, seen you, he sees you as sinlessly perfect because you got the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ. But when it comes to your walk, your daily walk, you want to be carrying a cross, you want to hold your weight, you want to pass over clean. You know, Joshua also has to circumcise the men of Israel in chapter 5 because they would not been circumcised by the way. And after this, the Lord says to Joshua, he says, this day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off you. In Joshua 5, 9, rolled away the reproach of Egypt. Egypt pictures the world. This pictures our spiritual circumcision where God cuts off your flesh from your soul. He rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off you so you can pass over clean. Now that's your standing. When you got saved, you didn't even know it, but God spiritually circumcised you. And now your flesh, when you sin in the flesh, it doesn't contaminate the soul anymore. And when he looks at the soul, he sees the blood of Jesus Christ so that no matter what, you can pass over clean. Now that's your standing. That's your standing right there. Nothing can change your standing. Now your state is how you're living at every given moment. And you want your state to be clean. Your goal should be for your state, how you're living at any given moment, to match your standing, which is clean. You want it to match your standing as much as you can possibly get it to match it. Now, you can't never match it perfectly because you're not going to get your flesh to be as righteous as the Lord Jesus Christ. If you could do that, then there would be no... They, you know, Christ would have died in vain. If we, you could be, if a person could just get their flesh to be perfect, like the Lord Jesus Christ, well, Christ died in vain then, right? But that you should be your goal. 
to get your state to be as close to your standing as you possibly can. Also, if he rolls the reproach of Egypt from off you, you can hold your weight much easier. You know, it says he rolled away the reproach of Egypt in Joshua 5, 9, when he did that circumcision. And if the Lord re rolls away the re reproach of Egypt, a picture of the world, if he takes that off your back, you can hold your weight much easier. You can carry your cross much easier. In Matthew 11.30, he says, His yoke is easy, his burden is light. He gives you something to carry, but he also takes that junk off of you so that you can carry what you're supposed to be carrying. You know, it talks about, Paul talks about, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that's set before us. Carrying the cross is lighter than carrying your sin. Because Jesus Christ will help you carry the cross. So Joshua and Israel are carrying these stones as a memorial. These stones are going to be a memorial. And this can picture carrying your cross. And you want to hasten the process. Look what it says in verse 10. Joshua 4.10, For the priests which bear the ark stood in the midst of Jordan until everything was finished that the Lord commanded Joshua to speak unto the people according to all that Moses commanded Joshua. And the pe people hasted and passed over. You want to hasten the process. The moment you get saved, you want to quickly begin listening to what Jesus Christ wants you to do. Now, you're not going to quit all your sin overnight. You're not just going to be some spiritual giant overnight, just this big, great Christian the next day. But you want to get rid of the sin as quick as you can. You want to start living for God as quick as you can, trying your best as quick as you can. The moment you get saved, you want to quickly begin trying to pass over clean. You know, there is a growth process. You know, 2 Peter 3.18, grow in grace and in the knowledge of Lord Savior Jesus Christ. You also need to spend time with God and the scriptures before jumping in the ministry or something. I'm not saying to, to quickly do a, a, a big decision or nothing. But beginning to clean up your life and attempting to pass over clean should be hastened. You need to Hasten the process. Do it now. Just like now is the accepted time. Today's the day of salvation. Well, after you're saved, today's the day to go ahead and try to pass over clean. So you need to pass over clean. You need to pass over prepared for warfare. Look at verse 12 and 13. It says in verse 12, And the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and half, tri and half the tribe of Manasseh passed over armed before the children of Israel, as Moses spake unto them, about 40,000 prepared for war passed over before the Lord unto battle to the plains of Jericho. So you got, got them prepared for a war. Passing over prepared for war. The Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, passed over armed before the children of Israel. So you need to pass over prepared for war. Pass over armed. In 1 Peter 4.1, it refers to how our Lord Jesus Christ suffered for us in the flesh. And it says, to arm ourselves likewise with the same mind. We need to arm ourselves with the same mind that he had. You know, you imagine how that cross was stabbed into the place of the skull. Mark fifteen twenty two, a head wound picture of Genesis three fifteen. The cross was a weapon. You know, we're carrying our cross. We're going to pass over clean. Just like they're carrying those stones. The cross is our weapon. The word of God is our weapon. And we're passing over prepared for war. We're passing over armed. In John nineteen seventeen, it says, And he bearing the cross went forth 
into a place called the place of a skull. You know, it might look like you're struggling carrying the cross. But when you're carrying that cross, that's like aiming your weapon at the enemy. When you're not carrying the cross, you don't have your weapon up. When the enemy sees you carrying that cross, it may look like you're struggling, but he sees that weapon aimed right at him. You need to pass over armed, just like the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh. They were passing over armed. You need, to, you need to pass over to battle. Verse 13 says, that About 40,000 prepared for war passed over before the Lord unto battle to the plains of Jericho. So they just came through the Jordan, took a whole bunch of faith to go through there. They've made it out through the other side. They got this confidence. They're ready for war. The two and a half tribes weren't just prepared and armed. It wasn't just some type of show. They were really going into battle. Consider how when Jesus Christ carried the cross and hung on it for our sins, he was fighting principalities and powers. And Isaiah even lays it out in detail, the Lord's words against the adversaries. In Isaiah 50, 7 through 9, look what it says in Isaiah 50, 7 through 9. For the Lord God will help me, therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. He is near that justifieth me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is mine adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God will help me. Who is he that shall condemn me? Lo, they all shall wax old as a garment. The moth shall eat them up. When Jesus Christ is on the cross, he's having a spiritual war going on that you didn't even know was going on. And he's saying, who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is mine adversary? Let him come near to me. The Lord wasn't just carrying a cross. He was fighting a battle. In Colossians 2.15, it says, He spoiled principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. The most amazing battle was won on the cross when he defeated death, he defeated hell, he defeated the grave, and he literally went into the heart of the earth while he was buried. He went into the heart of the earth and snatched the keys from death. And now Revelation 1.18 says, I have the keys of hell and of death. The Lord Jesus Christ said that. He also destroyed him that had the power of death, that is, the devil, Hebrews 2.14. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it's the power of God. That cross you're carrying, it's the power of God. And when you carry it, you're passing over clean. When you carry it, you got your weapon aimed at the enemy. You ever see them put them guns, soldiers put this type of gun over their shoulder and they're aiming that weapon. I don't know much about weapons, don't know much about guns, but the cross and the word of God, that's your weapon. And now the preaching of this cross that you're carrying is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved is the power of God. 1 Corinthians 1.18 Carry your cross. It doesn't make you weaker. It makes you stronger. Look at 2 Corinthians 12.10 In 2 Corinthians 12.10 It says, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Maybe you're bearing a lot of burdens. Maybe your cross has got you feeling weak. But when you're weak, you're strong. And Paul says, I bear in my body the dying of the Lord Jesus. Galatians 6, 17. That's when he's at his strongest. When he's got that cross on his shoulder with that weapon aimed. So you pass over clean. Pass over prepared for war. And if you do this, you're going to pass over on dry ground. Look at 
Verse 22 through 24 of Joshua 4. Joshua 4, 22. It says, Then ye shall let your children know, saying, Israel came over this Jordan on dry ground. You know, the children are going to ask, you know, what do all these stones mean here? Why are those stones like that? He says, well, then you shall let your children know, saying, Israel came over this Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of Jordan from before you until you were passed over, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up from before us until we were gone over. Then all the people of the earth might know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, that, that, that you might fear the Lord your God forever. So, continue to consider the miracle of passing over the Red Sea and the Jordan. They need to continue to remember these things. And these memorial stones is going to help them remember crossing the Jordan. And the more you remember these miracles, it'll help you stay out of the muck and the mire. If you're carrying your cross, you're not going to get muddy because you're holding on to the root out of dry ground. You see? That root out of dry ground, Isaiah 53, 2, the Lord Jesus Christ, He keeps you out of the muck and the mire. Because you're fearing the Lord. Verse 24, That all the people of the earth might know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, that, that, that you might fear the Lord your God forever. You're going to pass over on dry ground because you're holding on to the root out of dry ground because you fear the Lord. Why do you think Israel stepped out into the Jordan, a great fearful thing in front of them? It's because they feared the one they couldn't see more than the fearful thing in front of them that they couldn't see. That they could see. You know, they was fearing the Lord whom they couldn't see more than that Jordan in front of them that they could see. If they didn't fear God, they never would have passed over on dry ground. Carrying your cross and going through suffering for God shows that you fear Him. Pass over on dry ground because you fear the Lord. You also go through on dry ground because you want other people to fear. We want to please him who hath chosen us to be a soldier, 2 Timothy 2, 4. And we want to leave behind a memorial and a legacy for our kids. Don't you want them to remember you as an old soldier of the cross? Don't you want to see that, don't you want them to see that you fear God and cause them to fear God as well? You know, the stones that they're carrying are to be a sign for the kids. It said in Joshua 4.21, And he spake unto the children of Israel, saying, When your children shall ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean these stones? You see, those kids that didn't know all that they knew are going to see those stones and be like, What does this mean? The stones they were to, carrying, to be carrying were a sign. It was an opportunity to remind everybody of how great God is and about the wonders that he's performed. Don't you want to leave some stones laying around your house, on your bookshelf, in your personal testimony, in your tool shed, in the heart of your grandkids that's going to remind them of the God that you served and how you feared him and remind them how they should fear him? If you fear the Lord who is almighty as it says there in verse 24, that all the people of the earth might know the hand of the Lord that is mighty. You know, if you fear the Lord who is almighty, it greatly heightens the chance of your children's children fearing the Lord as well. And don't forget, children's children are the crown of old men, Proverbs 17, 6. What you do affects your children. What you fear affects what your kids are going to fear. You see, and if you've got all these memorial stones laying around, what do you think those grandkids and great-grandkids are going to be reminded of? 
You know, in Joshua 5, 9, it, it talks about how the Lord rolled away the reproach. And when Jesus Christ resurrected, the stone was rolled away. And you've been resurrected spiritually if you're saved. He's rolled away the flesh and the world and the devil from off your back. But in this present life, while I'm still here in this sinful flesh, I've got to carry the cross until my physical resurrection. You know, spiritually speaking, I'm sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus right now. I'm already there in Jesus. I'm just waiting on my body to be. I'm walking around carrying my cross, trying to carry my cross until I get that physical resurrection. You know, maybe you got saved 40 years ago and you never did pick up your cross. Maybe you never crossed the Jordan even. Maybe you're not even, you've not even entered into the victorious Christian life. You might have been camping on the other side of Jordan all this time. And you never went armed into the enemy's presence to fight with your brothers. But you can start now. Perhaps you are newly saved. Go ahead and hasten to carry the cross. If you carry yours, it's likely your kids are going to see it and carry theirs. You know, Simon of Cyrene was compelled to bear the Lord's cross in Matthew twenty-seven thirty-two, And in Mark fifteen twenty-one, it says he was the father, this Simon the Cyrene that carried the Lord's cross. In Mark fifteen twenty-one, it says he was the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then in Romans 16, 23, Paul says, Salute Rufus, chosen in the Lord. It could be that Rufus saw his father, Simon, carrying the Lord's cross and decided to follow the Lord and take up his cross. Are you putting memorials through your life? You know, every day when you get up and you're kid sees you read the Bible, your kid sees you take up your cross, make the right decisions, put God first, you're laying little memorial stones along the way, and they're seeing all of it. And then one day when, when you're dead and gone, and they go to clean out your house, are they going to see little memorial stones? You got a Bible over here. You got a journal with Bible studies in it over here. A journal with a prayer requests in it over here. A Bible that's just full of notes, full of uh, prayers answered, and everything else. Those are little memorial stones that somebody's going to see. And they're going to see that you passed over clean. You were hearkening to Joshua, the Lord Jesus Christ. You were holding your weight. You were passing over prepared for war. Passed over armed carrying the cross and the scriptures, passed over prepared to battle, passing over on dry ground because you're holding the root out of dry ground, passing over because you fear the Lord more than the fears that you can see.